Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, good afternoon in Bucharest. Um, I'm General Jim Jones. I'm the Executive Chairman Emeritus of the Atlantic Council, and it's an honor to be with you today. And I'm delighted to welcome you to uh, this important conversation regarding the United States and Romania and how we can build the next century for partnership together. This event is the final installment in our uh, five day long Central Europe Week series, which we designed to celebrate US Central European relations, leadership and culture, while also helping to shape a path towards, the, uh, and, towards and forward the uh, Transatlantic Alliance. We are hosting today's convention in partnership with the Romanian American Chamber of Commerce, and we hope this event proves to be just the first of many more to come. At this moment, the transatlantic community is facing unprecedented challenges, a historic and destructive health crisis that has upended the way we live our lives, a global economic recession, and the return of great power competition. During the Cold War, the line of defense for Europe was, uh, for, for Western Europe at least, where the line of defense was uh, Germany. Today, it runs more along the Baltic states down to the Black Sea region. And this makes uh, America's economic defense, political and technology relationships with the region all the more crucial. And it underpins the logic for central, uh, the Council of Central Europe week. In parallel, our societies are grappling with issues of race, of identity, migration, nationalism, and so many other things. And in the United States, we're in the midst of one of the most contentious presidential elections in our nation's history. And Romania, of course, is also navigating its own election uh, season. While we continue to navigate these internal and external challenges, I firmly believe we must continue to invest in our alliances as well as Europe that is prosperous and free and at peace. And as a highlighted uh, and as highlighted in a recent report by the Atlantic Council and Globsec, the United States and Central Europe are natural partners uh, to help the transatlantic alliance move forward in the post pandemic era. In this region, the United States has no better ally than Romania. Time and again, Romania has stood shoulder to shoulder with the United States. Its soldiers have fought bravely with their American and allied counterparts in NATO and coalition operations. And today, Romania is aligning with the United States on energy security, 5G security, the Three Seas Initiative, and defense technology. These decisions set Romania on the proper path for a strong and balanced strategic partnership and I'm pleased that on this call, we have our bilateral ambassadors, the distinguished uh, George Mayor and the Honorable Adrian uh, Zuckerman. Both of them deserve our appreciation and credit for their work in achieving historic advances in this relationship on the 140th anniversary of our bilateral ties. But before we begin, I also would like to commend my Atlantic Council colleagues for their work on Central Europe and Romania including our executive vice president, Damon Wilson, future Europe initiative director, Benjamin Haddad, Wiser family distinguished fellow ambassador, Dan Freed, Scowcroft director, Barry Pavel, senior fellow, Ian Brzezinski, and associate director, Denise Forsthuber, among others. As we launch into this conversation today, please remember to follow along on social media by using the hashtag Central Europe Week and following the Future Europe Initiative on Twitter. Uh, with that, I'm also proud to announce that uh, today's event will be moderated by Dr. Clara Volantiru, Associate Professor at the Bucharest University of Economic Studies and Fellow at the German Marshall Fund of the United States. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce the Secretary of State from Romania, the Honorable Dan Dragan. Mr. Secretary, the floor is yours. So the secretary is muted.
Yeah, that's okay. I, believe it's... I, I think that's good, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Your Excellency, Ambassador, dear Ambassador Zuckerman, Your Excellency, dear Ambassador uh, Mayor. Firstly, on behalf of Mr. Popescu, the Ministry of Energy, Energy and Business Environment, I would like to express warm thanks for the invitation and the opportunity to address this meeting, as well, he, as, well as his regards, not for being able to join himself to do the last minute meeting with the subject of National Resilience and Recovery Plan. We celebrate this year's 140 years of diplomatic relation and 23 outstanding years since the signing of our strategic partnership. The world is facing today unprecedented challenges, but our alliance can turn into opportunities. Romania and the United States can not only support the recovery, but also join forces to invest in our future, in the resilience of our societies and in the health of our environment. I would like to draw attention to the subject close to my heart, which is the energy. Without a doubt, the world is undergoing a fast transition in terms of energy generation and the role played by the clean energy sources. In fact, the paradigm shift focus around two components, climate change and economic prosperity. Romania is committed to its decarbonization targets by dedicating time, resources, expertise and efforts to develop nuclear capacity that can simultaneously enhance environmental protection access to electricity and energy security, benefits extended to our region through efficient interconnectivity. We are fully aware of the multilateral benefits of developing the nuclear program, and also we choose to partner with the best in the industry. The United States has a long solid expertise in operation, construction, development of the supply chain, state-of-the-art technology and, nevertheless, both the willingness and capabilities to bring together countries and organizations under the same goal. In this context, context of mutual opening, Romania and the United States have undertaken big steps in developing their strategic partnership in terms of the energy component, namely cooperation in the civil nuclear field. On October the 9th, 9th, Romania and U.S. signed an intergovernmental agreement which aimed to develop the civil nuclear program in Romania by providing technical and regulatory expertise while strengthening the security, diversity, operational safe and environment sustainability of our energy system. The agreement provides it for the construction of nuclear unit 3 and 4 and the refurbishment of unit 1 in Chernavoda nuclear power plant, as well as the possibility of developing SMR reactors in Romania on the medium and long term. In addition, the agreements also cover the development of bilateral trade collaboration strengthening the energy supply chain, joint project in the areas of education, research and development, a permanent platform for the exchange of good practice and lessons learned and common position on different matter of interest. Moreover, the relation between Romania and the United States extend well beyond the nuclear field across economic trade and investment sector. U.S. companies and investment in Romania have a strong presence, while the recently signed MOU with Exim Bank of the United States facilitates investment in infrastructure such as road, rail and gas storage. I want to thank all those that were involved in making this agreement of the memorandum a reality. They started with the joint statement of our presidents while for the effective start of the cooperation. I would like to thank you the Prime Minister of Romania and also the United States Ambassador to Romania, His Excellency Adrian Sugarman. It has been an hour for me to be able to open the today discussion and I would like to take this opportunity to state again that we remain firmly dedicated to the objective of securing the next century of the Romanian United States-Romanian partnership. Thank you very much and hope to see you soon. Stay safe.
Thank you very much, Secretary of State Dragos Dragan, for this comprehensive overview of our topic of discussion today. It is my great privilege to moderate today's discussion, today's event, Securing the Next Century of US-American Partnership. What a timely and relevant topic. Uh, I'm joined by an amazing lineup of people who have done so much to broaden and deepen the strategic partnership between America and Romania. Because we have to be mindful of time, let me briefly introduce the speakers alphabetically. We are joined here today by Mrs. Nadia Krishan, Executive Director at Princeton University by His Excellency George Meyer, Ambassador of Romania to the United States, by Mr. Dan Negra, Special Representative for Commercial and Business Affairs at the Department of State, by Mr. Stephen Rena, Chief Banking Officer, Export-Import Bank of the United States, and by the Honorary Adrian Zuckerman, U.S. Ambassador to Romania. Thank you all very much for joining us today. I will jump right into action with a first question targeting Mr. Ambassador Mayer. Ambassador Mayer, how do you view the US-Romanian relations, particularly in the context of the recent positive developments? Well, thank you very much, first of all, for uh, inviting me and having this uh, very useful and interesting discussion on the strategic partnership between uh, Romania and the uh, United States. I would like to, uh, first of all, appreciate uh, the message of uh, General Jones, an old friend of mine and of Romania, that has uh, contributed a lot uh, to the de development of this partnership uh, in the area of defense, but not only in the area of technology, for example. Um, I will answer, uh, try to answer this uh, question very briefly. Uh, I think it's an important moment this year to sum up uh, a great uh, development in the partnership in the last uh, years. Uh, just to mention uh, the important uh, interaction of the high, highest level between uh, our president, President Johannes, and uh, President Trump two times uh, in uh, four years. And this has opened new avenues for interaction and cooperation, apart from the traditional ones, of course, security, defense cooperation uh, is firmly established, but it has been developed through these uh, meetings and interactions. Uh, but new avenues, I said, especially in the area of uh, energy cooperation, that was very well uh, uh, mentioned by uh, our State Secretary, the Dragan, also in the area of uh, 5G, underlined uh, very uh, clearly uh, by uh, General Jones. I think those are new aspects that uh, will uh, be very significant in the coming years uh, for the medium and the long term uh, of this partnership because they relate not only uh, to security in a new uh, context and in a new concept but also uh, to the economic uh, potential uh, of interaction in the context of the, this partnership. I think uh, we all have to work harder uh, to create this balance, this equilibrium between our extraordinary security relationship and the immense potential of uh, trade and economic uh, relations uh, between our countries. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Ambassador Zuckerman will agree that uh, the latest uh, developments in this area, and I thank him and thank him for uh, his wonderful contributions have uh, been uh, very productive and uh, very encouraging uh, for why, what might be a uh, very uh, strong deepening uh, of our trade and commercial uh, relationship, which is essential for uh, prosperity uh, between our two countries and uh, for 
uh, economic uh, security, energy security in a very complicated and complex uh, environment. So uh, uh, we uh, can say without using big words that uh, we are at the highest uh, level uh, of this partnership right now after so, so many years and uh, that we have uh, great uh, things to do in the coming uh, years because the foundation is uh, led uh, for uh, such a positive uh, dynamic irrespective of uh, uh, political developments I believe uh, that the relationship with, between Romania and the United States is solid, uh, it's based on common values, it's based on common interest, it's based on a common appreciation of challenges and threats, uh, again, in very uh, complicated uh, areas uh, of the world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador Meyer. Um, stay tuned, we will return to you shortly with, with follow-up questions. But now I turn to Ambassador Zuckerman. And, and my question to you, sir, is the following. Given the current context in which efforts have been laid towards building a multidimensional security framework in the region, I am particularly thinking here of Secretary Pompeo's efforts to build the clean energy uh, and the progress on the Three Seas initiative. What are the opportunities and challenges for the US-Romanian relations moving forward? Thank you for that question. And uh, let me just start by uh, thanking everybody for uh, having me here today. It's wonderful to be here. Um, uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, and thank you, George, I would never disagree with you. Uh, I think we have made tremendous progress in the bilateral relationship this year. Uh, I think, as George indicated earlier, I don't think the relationship has been any better than it is today. I think it spans not only economic development, I think it uh, covers uh, energy uh, commitments, uh, uh, military commitments, and I think uh, both countries could not be closer philosophically uh, than they are today. Uh, I think all of this is due to uh, President Trump's vision and leadership in uh, uh, setting forth a variety of programs that allowed us to reach this point. I think a lot of it started with his meeting in Washington with President Johannes, and we've built on that and we've moved forward. And uh, I think the, the Black Sea region, which is anchored by uh, Romania and Poland uh, in terms of defense and economy and energy uh, are gonna be the future for Europe. Uh, I've said it before, and I think I've heard uh, uh, General Jones, uh, Jim mentioned earlier in his remarks that the US uh, has no better friend than Romania. I think the reverse is true. Uh, <clears throat> uh, that Romania has no better friend than the US. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful uh, bilateral relationship. I think this was recently evidenced by the intergovernmental agreement uh, that the country signed with respect or initial with respect to the development of the Chernoboda nuclear project, which will double the electrical capacity generated from there. It's uh, approximately an $8 billion project, uh, also evidenced by the faith that Exxon Bank had. Uh, Steve may address in his remarks later of, of uh, signing an MOU for a $7 billion loan and guarantee package. I think uh, uh, there are other energy developments in the Black Sea in terms of gas and oil extraction. Uh, the, the military uh, cooperation and development has never been closer. There are 
a number of weapons systems that are being developed and placed in Romania to help uh, various defense aspects, various personnel will be developed, will be placed here. And uh, uh, I've often referred to this period as the Romanian Renaissance, because I believe it. Uh, I think it's the transition of getting rid of the last vestiges of the Red Barons, as I call them, and moving forward to a truly democratic and free Romania that will be a leader in Europe. And we intend to fully assist and cooperate with Romania in doing so. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador. We have heard uh, encouraging uh, thoughts and, and ideas about the recent developments. And now I would like to turn to Mrs. Krishan um, and, and have uh, a step a little bit, uh, uh, step a little bit uh, back and look at the broad overview of the evolution of the American-Romanian partnership over the past decades. And I would ask you, based on your experience and expertise, could you give, uh, please give us some examples and an overview of how it provides stability in the region and what it ultimately means for people and businesses? Thank you very much for the question and good morning, everyone. Um, it's an honor to be here with um, such distinguished panelists. Um, I had the privilege to live both as a diplomat as well as a um, business and entrepreneur a representative of uh, Romanian and American interests um, over the past 17, 20 years. And so it's, it's really a joy for me to see how we went from um, very few U.S. investments prior to 2000 to quite a few U.S. investments, especially as we uh, joined NATO and the European Union. Um, I was particularly privileged to be part of the team that uh, brought Four Motor Company to Romania in 2007. And that is today a $2 billion direct investment in Craiova and across Romania with over 30 um, manufacturers of components, what we call suppliers to Ford, also being present in Romania. So that's a, that's a very specific example of direct investment um, of a US company. Um, it's been great to see ExxonMobil um, in Romania as well. And as uh, we look at energy security, it is clearly my hope that a strong U.S. presence in the Black Sea will continue to exist. Uh, and I'm obviously very pleased to hear about the most recent developments. Um, we see significant U.S. investments in the agribusiness uh, sector, for instance. If we look at Smithfield Foods, um, they came in 2004 and today they provide a significant uh, support in a sector that's key to Romania and agriculture. At the same time, there is potential for growth. There is an opportunity for companies like Smithfield to export to the United States. And that is something that I think is part of the next um, phase of the development that both ambassadors Mayor and Zuckerman spoke about. Um, Romania has a great IT potential. Um, it's been wonderful to see many companies um, in Romania, many US companies, invest in the talent that Romania has in the IT sector. And also it's been an honor to see companies like UiPath who uh, have a strong uh, US and Romanian link. So those are great examples of projects that have been growing uh, and growing over the course of the years, uh, despite the various political challenges, changes in the administrations and, and so forth. Um, where we go from here, clearly, um, it's a it's a it's an important question i think there always have been many ideas about the potential that exists in the relationship and i think it's critical now to move from potential to projects and to prosperity so i very much hope to be part of that growth and of, of those projects um, in the business sector and also academically which is where i am now uh, thank you for that and i'll stay stand by for any questions 
Thank you very much. Um, I will then return now to the recent developments and ask both Mr. Negra and Mr. Rena uh, complementary viewpoints on recent developments. And I'm thinking here of the uh, at the international agreement to cooperate on the expansion and modernization of Romania's civil uh, nuclear power plant, and also at the seven billion dollar uh, memorandum of understanding between the Export Import Bank and the Ministry of Economic economics in Romania, aiming to promote business development opportunities, particularly in the energy and infrastructure sector. We know the deficiencies that Romania uh, has had over the past years in the infrastructure sector, and also the key strategic interests in the energy sector. So my question to you is, what does this tell us about the future cooperation on energy and security issues and what are the mutual goals achieved through these recent agreements? Mr. Negra first. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can hear you now, sir. You have the Wonderful. floor. Um, thank you very much. So, um, uh, I'm delighted to be here, um, and not just in my uh, capacity um, uh, as an official at the Department of State, but also as someone who was born in Romania, uh, lived there under communism until I was uh, 25 years old, and um, I then asked for political asylum in the United States. And um, <clears throat> I'm um, I even graduated from the school where you teach Ms. Volontiero, uh, Academia de Studi Economici, Facultada de Comercio Exterior. The significance of the uh, intergovernmental agreement and of the Exim Bank um, loan um, is that it is yet another right choice by Romania um, in a series of right choices that were made in partnership with the United States. And let me elaborate uh, on that. Um, after the fall of communism, uh, Romania cho chose to reject the principle of spheres of influence and uh, chose to, uh, to uh, reject the lawless ways in which business was done in, uh, under communism and joined the European Union and joined NATO and central to its foreign policy has been uh, the partnership and the friendship uh, and the alliance with the United States. And that dealt with its strategic position and economic future in Europe. And just when we thought that communism was discredited uh, with the disintegration of the Soviet Union and the fall of communism all over Europe um, and the the path towards reform under Deng Xiaoping in China. Hard communism is coming back with the policies of uh, President Xi Jinping in China. And China is offering um, economic transactions that on their face look attractive. But for a country like Romania, where the practices of communism are still uh, uh, in the near past, uh, it's something that they recognize as all too well um, as being ultimately non-productive. Uh, the companies that are offering these deals are state-owned enterprises that are controlled by a totalitarian regime that oppresses its people and bullies its neighbors. And Romania has made yet more choices in response to what China is offering as a vision of the world. Romania was the first country to sign a memorandum of understanding with the United States regarding 5G, saying that uh, 5G, critically important to the development of any country and of the world, um, 5G business must be done with trustworthy partners. And that was an important choice and it was an agreement signed last year between President Trump and President Johannes. The recent transaction, the IGA and, and the loan from Exim Bank of uh, Chernavoda was yet another choice like this. It was a choice that in civil nuclear energy, similarly, 
uh, Romania chose not a Chinese solution, but a, a solution that involved the free world. Yes, the United States is leading uh, the, the, the provision of technology, but at the same time, there is content from Canada, from France, and significant con uh, content from Romania. So the significance of this deal is yet another right choice by Romania and when Romania makes these choices, the United States is there to support and, and, and grow together uh, with the Romanian people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Negra. What a privilege for our faculty to have such distinguished alumni as yourself. I will turn now to Mr. Stephen Rena and ask you, sir, about your viewpoint on the mutual strategic interests furthered by the recent developments. How does the U.S. support Romania on these strategic issues? Well, thank you very much. And, and again, thank you for inviting me. It's, a very, it's very hard to follow the, the eloquent comments of my friend and colleague, Dan Grea. And it's also, I want to say, good to be reconnected with Ambassador Zuckerman and you, Ambassador Mayor. You might remember I used to work for Secretary Ross at the Department of Commerce before I came over to the Exim Bank. Um, if I can, just to give the audience a little bit of uh, a level set understanding of what Exim is and what it does and how it does it. The Exim Bank is the export credit agency of the United States government. Our mission is to support U.S. jobs by facilitating U.S. exports. And how do we do that? We facilitate these exports by providing a financing solution to the export contract. So what that means is when there is a foreign buyer of U.S. goods and services, whether it's at the government level or it's at the private sector level, and the foreign buyer is not able for whatever reason to obtain the necessary credit that it needs from the private sector lending market to be able to acquire the U.S. goods and services, the U.S. Exim Bank steps in and provides to the lender of the foreign buyer a guarantee, the U.S. government guarantee on behalf of that foreign buyer. So the foreign buyer therefore will qualify for the necessary credit that it needs uh, in order to be able to acquire the U.S. goods and services. So what the Exim Bank is, is a tool of the U.S. government to be able to foster economic relations around the world by facilitating the ability of U.S. businesses, businesses around the world and governments to be able to transact together, foster economic ties, those economic ties will strengthen our economic relationship, but also lead to stronger diplomatic relationships. So that's the role of the Exim Bank overall. Specifically with respect to Romania, I will just tell you from in our past experience, we have uh, provided financing to, to Rome Airlines in order to acquire aircraft that it needs. We've provided millions and millions of dollars worth of export credit insurance for exporters, like you mentioned Smithfield earlier, the exporters in the United States selling goods to Romania, providing export credit insurance to make sure those transactions can happen. And of course, now before us, we have perhaps the most significant economic transaction in the recent history between the United States and Romania, and that is for the financing of the Chernovoda nuclear project. And I do want to commend Ambassador Zuckerman and Secretary Barrett, the Secretary uh, of our Department of Commerce for the tremendous work that they have done to orient this project towards an opportunity for US companies, along with their allies in, in Canada, to be able to develop this site. Uh, as referenced, we recently signed, and Ambassador Zuck Zuckerman was there in our offices along with Minister uh, Popescu, we signed the Memorandum of Understanding for the financing of $7 billion with Romania, a, a good amount of that, most of that uh, in mind with the intent to help uh, provide financing to uh, the Chernovoda nuclear project. 
Uh, this is not finalized yet. We have a lot of work to do. I think as people uh, per understand very well, uh, civil nuclear projects are incredibly complex. They take a long time to develop. They are highly risky. Uh, and what is absolutely critical to it, as uh, the CEO of uh, SNN's mentioned to me, Cosmic Gita, he said financing is one of the most critical aspects of this because you have such long-term risk exposure on a nuclear project. And the United States and Exxon Bank pledge to work with SN SSN and the Romanian government to find the proper financing solutions that are needed so we can help make this transaction go forward. The discussions we've had to date are very meaningful. I have re recently signed a letter that will be delivered to, uh, to CEO Gita in the very near future, outlining areas in which we will be working with uh, his company and with the government of Romania to find the solutions that are needed so this project can go forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Indeed, um, it's all around wonderful news for key uh, energy projects for Romania and, might I add, regional projects. Um, and on that note, I would like to come back to all the panelists with um, a single question that very important. What is your advice to the future United States president, be it a Trump II or a Biden administration, on how to further the American-Romanian partnership, but also the broader transatlantic community. Should we proceed in the same order? Ambassador Mayer. Well, that's a very interesting and, I must say, difficult question for a diplomat, but uh, I will emphasize, uh, based on historical facts, that uh, irrespective of uh, the color of a certain American administration, uh, the Romanian uh, uh, partnership uh, with, the US, with the US has been uh, developed, uh, has been uh, pursued as a very uh, transpartinic goal. And uh, I am very uh, optimistic that uh, this is the case. I mentioned the last four years uh, with uh, uh, President Trump meeting twice the Romanian president, President Johannes, that has been a tremendous achievement for our diplomacy and our political interaction at the highest level uh, with the American administration. I am confident that the partnership will uh, sustain continuity uh, and uh, we look forward uh, to working uh, with uh, the American administration in this respect. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ambassador Zuckerman, your thoughts? Uh, my first thought, that's an interesting question. My second thought is just to add <clears throat> to what Stephen said, uh, he's being modest, but the $7 billion uh, loan package that Exxon uh, uh, signed the MOU for with Romania is the largest such package I believe Exxon has ever done and I believe it's also the biggest uh, Romania has had from the US and I believe for that matter from any country so it's a very very exciting project and uh, we will proceed full steam ahead on that uh, as we have proceeded on all of the projects this year. Uh, with regard to answering your question a little more directly, uh, let me just say that we intend to pursue for the next several years all the projects that we started this year, including the uh, uh, Via Carpathia project from the uh, uniting the Black Sea with the Baltic, uh, the rail to sea project that will be doing the same, uh, pursuing uh, uh, military cooperation and developing uh, weapon systems and deploying more US troops, rotational troops to Romania, uh, and also pursuing uh, projects that have been very close to us uh, such as uh, stopping human trafficking. Uh, 
the Romanian government has been very active in that. They've started up a group to uh, uh, dedicated to stopping human trafficking. They've been very diligent uh, as compared to the prior government. We anticipate they'll continue doing that. And I fully anticipate that President Trump and I will continue to do that for the next few years. Thank you so much, sir. Mrs. Krishan, what are your thoughts on the matter? What is your advice? My advice would be to look at Romania with trust, with honest and genuine trust. As everybody has said, there is no stronger partner that has been consistent throughout every administration at every level from grassroots to grass tops. So when that happens and it's consistent and when Romanian soldiers and when Romanian intelligence services, when Romanian partners across the spectrum are 110% there for you, you need to be there for them too. And so looking at Romania with trust as an equal partner would be my first advice. I think we're in a different league, we're in a different phase. I think we need to look at the present and the future and focus less on the past and on some of the things that perhaps have, have not gone as, as, as well as we would have wanted or anticipated. Um, I also think we need to look at this, as I said, um, with a fair share, um, with a strong Romanian component that will catch up in time over the next century with a significant um, US component. So with trust, with an opportunity, uh, with an open heart and open mind, and also with an open border. So um, Romania has been pushing hard for uh, the visa waiver. I think it's about time with a new administration, uh, whichever that will be, to be in a position that Romanians are treated with respect, with the same uh, treatment as everybody else in the region, and to uh, encourage that engagement at the people-to-people -people level beyond political engagement. Thank you so much. An inspiring message. I turn to you now, Mr. Negra. What is your advice? Um, first of all, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you well, sir. OK, wonderful. Um, well, I will start with the following observation. Um, there are relations between countries that are based on interest. And there are also um, relations that, in addition to interest, have strong um, affinity between the peoples, and um, uh, where the relation also has um, the feature of warmth and uh, and and trust and, and true friendship. And um, the relationship between the United States and Romania. Um, it's not only strong in political matters and in economic matters, but also in relation between peoples. Um, and nothing builds this um, stronger maybe than, than soldiers shedding their blood uh, together on, on, on fields. And there have been also polls that show that um, uh, in Romania, 78% of the people have favorable views of, of the United States. So the relationship is, is strong in all respects. Going forward, um, it is uh, then a matter of re-emphasizing what works. And key among these things is finding new ways to develop the wonderful human capital in Romania, the, uh, the capabilities of the young people of Romania, uh, the tremendous talent that Romania has shown, for example, in, in high tech. And the other area that can be emphasized even more in the future is economic reforms. Again, I was talking earlier about the right choices. There are opportunities for further right choices to go even further on the path of creating an environment favorable to foreign capital. I always like to say that capital investment is a very difficult guest. Uh, goes only when where, where he's treated right and leaves when he's not treated right. 
So Romania needs to continue to create a regulatory environment, a respect for law environment that will do even more to attract foreign capital that will create prosperity for the Romanian people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Rena, what are your thoughts on the matter? Thank you. And with respect to your question, since I'm an appointee of President Trump, I would only provide advice to President Trump. And in this case, President Trump needs no advice from me because he recognizes fully uh, the valuable tool that the Exxon Bank is to the U.S. government with its overall objective with respect to fostering uh, U.S. trade and investment around the world. Uh, so what I would like to focus on would be uh, other areas in Romania in which the Exxon Bank can engage and looks forward to engaging. Uh, and I think to Dan's point, talking about inviting capital in and where it's welcome is where it will go. U.S. companies will go to Romania if they see that their capital will be treated well there. And if U.S. companies seek to do business in Romania, that gives the opportunity for the Exxon Bank to be able to support them with the financing solutions that it can bring to the Romanian companies and the Romanian government seeking to do business with these American companies. So some of the areas in which we hope to see U.S. companies pursuing opportunities in Romania and Romania welcoming these US companies is in the area of energy, not just the Chernovoda nuclear project, but obviously in the Black Sea with the natural gas development there, that's a very natural industry sector for Exxon to be able to participate. Infrastructure, I mentioned the financing of aircraft to, to Rome Airlines, but also rail and other forms of transportation. And very importantly, there was the mention of 5G, the agreement that Dan Gray referred to, Exxon right now is one of its top priorities is to help US and allies of the United States in the, the telecom sector compete directly with China by providing the attractive financing packages that are needed for telecom operators around the world, certainly in Romania, to choose a non-Chinese solution to their telecom. Important, obviously, just for economic relationship purposes, but as everyone knows, for national security purposes. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a uh, captivating and interesting discussion, but I hope we still have enough time for more uh, uh, captivating thoughts. As I turn to the audience for the Q&A session, I would firstly like to give the floor to Mr. Mike Ma Mark Mayer, who is the president of the Romanian American Chamber of Commerce, um, co-organizer of this wonderful event. Mr. Mayer, you have the floor. Thank you so much. And um, thank you to the panelists and to the Atlantic Council for this wonderful program and for uh, co-sponsoring it uh, with the Romanian American Chamber of Commerce. As, as many of you know, we're in our 30th year um, of operation in promoting trade and investment between the United States and, and Romania. Um, and we have now, um, active and vibrant chapters across the United States, including in San Francisco, Los Angeles, Arizona, Cleveland, Washington, D.C., and New York. And when it comes to Washington, D.C., I want to take a moment to particularly thank Doreen Muntianu, who is the president of our Washington, D.C. chapter, for organizing this with the Atlantic Council. Um, we are also in the process, by the way, of forming an international chapter uh, where we hope to have um, uh, hope to have chapters in Bucharest, Yash, Cluj, and Constanza. My question uh, to the panel um, is: that Obviously, we all see the strategic partnership between the United States and Romania as vital to the interests of both countries. But Romania also faces a clash of other interests, and the question is: How does it navigate? For example, the Sino-American Sino trade war that's underway, or the interests of Germany and France and the EU 
as well as the interests of the United States. May I take this question first? Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very uh, important question. And thank you, Mark, for uh, your 30 years of activity in terms of uh, the dynamics uh, of uh, commercial and trade between uh, Romania and US. Uh, of course, uh, the European Union uh, was an important uh, fundamental objective of our society and uh, our uh, state. Uh, we don't see, and that's a firm uh, policy of ours, uh, we don't see uh, our uh, relationship and our partnership uh, with the uh, United States uh, in any way uh, competitive with that of EU. On the contrary, it's complementary in terms of our uh, security in terms of our uh, economic prosperity and in terms of uh, the vision of a strong and solid transatlantic relationship that we all need. Europe needs US, US needs Europe in terms of security, in terms of economics, in terms of trade. And Romania is a strong and uh, very, uh, I would say, powerful voice in terms of uh, uh, making this uh, relationship work in all uh, those areas that are so vital for the free world. In terms of uh, the dynamics uh, uh, in a larger context, this uh, uh, situation uh, with China, but of course uh, our area, the Black Sea, with the threats and challenges that we are facing there from other big actors like uh, Russia, I believe that uh, our uh, partnership uh, with US and EU uh, is always giving solutions in terms of our common interest related to these challenges that will clearly uh, affect uh, the future of uh, international relations uh, for the medium and the long term. Thank you very much. Mm. If I may just um, add to what uh, Ambassador Mayor has said, um, the U.S. has always been uh, the number one partner to Romania. So the EU membership, I think, it's um, a complementary role. And clearly, there are foreign policy matters where uh, we have different views, such as Iran and the JCPLO. Um, but I think the substance of the partnership and the um, really the, the, the immediate component uh, of it, such as um, we talked about connectivity and the three Cs, the fact that the US uh, and Vice President Pence have sent such a strong signal that the US is considering contributing up to $1 billion to that initiative. I think signal like those will uh, bring further uh, interest in Bucharest and further commitment. Um, there's no doubt about loyalty. I think nobody really in Bucharest is, is truly concerned about, about China. If anything, I think the administration is investing heavily in the relationship with US allies, such as Japan and uh, South Korea. So if you look at the numbers economically, the Chinese presence is significantly lower uh, compared to Japan, South Korea, and others. If, if I, I may... may... Oh, oh, please, Ambassador, go ahead. Thanks, Stephen. I'll, I'll, I'll be quick. Uh, I, I just want to emphasize Georgia's response. I, I think the EU-Romania-US uh, relationship is quite symbiotic, and I think it's uh, evidenced by the Chernobyl deal, which we've mentioned before, where there's going to be US content, French content, Canadian content, Romanian content. Uh, I think uh, there are many, many transactions where uh, Romania has uh, with uh, other EU members. Uh, uh, Romania and Poland are going to build jointly the, the uh, road between the Black Sea and the Baltic, as well as the railroad. Uh, uh, however, I think the Chinese presence, not only in Romania, but in the EU, is a tremendous danger. I think Chinese China today is more corrupt and dangerous than ever. I think Chinese businesses have no place in Romania. They're completely corrupt. 
They're a vestige of the old communist government. They foster corruption. They engender corruption. Huawei has been indicted on numerous counts. It has no place here. The majority of Chinese companies that seek to do business in Romania have been indicted on a variety of fraud counts. The people in Romania that support them should not be. They're disingenuous and they don't advance Romania's democratic initiative and progress in the last number of years. And uh, 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 we have to deal with that. I think uh, the Department of State under the Energy Secretary has been uh, very vocal on that, on 5G and clean paths, trying to protect national security. And virtually every Confucius Center here in the United States and in other places is designed as a recruiting station as information gathering in the United States that have been designated as diplomatic centers. Uh, I think that it, it's a major, major danger to Romania and, and the free world going forward. And we have to show exemplary care uh, with regard to the disinformation and uh, dealing with them going forward. Thank you. Uh, if I may, first, I, I would just want to agree with every word Ambassador Zuckerman said, and also add, we haven't talked about COVID and the effect of the pandemic on economies around the world. And one of the biggest effects on economies around the world is the retrenchment of credit available to companies that they need in order to transact. And as we come out of the pandemic and start uh, re-engaging economically, I know around the world that uh, buyers of U.S. goods and services are going to find that credit is not as available as it was pre-pandemic. Lenders are just going to be uh, more credit risk averse. In response to that, the Exim Bank has set up a COVID response in that we are providing foreign buyers with bridge loan financing. So if a foreign buyer wants to engage in a transaction but cannot get credit from the private markets, we will be there to provide temporary bridge financing for as long as it's needed until long-term financing can be acquired from the, the private sector. Uh, so we just uh, want everyone to understand that XM has a tool to help you re-engage from a financing standpoint. Thank you so much, Mr. Rena, for anticipating a final question for, from the audience, and that is the elephant in the room. How will a second year of pandemics affect the transatlantic relationship? Uh, any thoughts from the panel? Um, can I comment on uh, the, the previous question, please? Please, go ahead. So, um, I think it's very important to recognize uh, for Romanians who have a long history of uh, relationships with uh, large countries that um, ask hey, Roger. more from Halloween. that ask more from Romania than they gave to Romania. The relationship with the United States is very different from that. Uh, there is no desire on the part of the United States to limit the relationships that Romania is having. And actually one of the foundations of the relationship with Romania is NATO, in which the United States is contributing heavily and in which Romania is part of the exclusive 2% club. Also, in terms of economic matters, it is very important to recognize that in, in the 5G matter, the United States is very insistent on, provide, on, on countries uh, joining the clean path, the clean network uh, in 5G. But this is not in the interest of promoting American companies selling that product versus Huawei selling that product. There is no American company providing 5G product. It's Ericsson, Nokia, and Samsung. Um, so it's very important to recognize that coming back to uh, my friend Mark Myers' question. There is no, there is no limitation 
uh, to what Romania can do with its other partners, the relationship with the United States is additive and strengthening to those relationships. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Negra. And if I have you on the on the spotlight, would you like to jump in with the first comment, a lightning round? We will do a closing lightning round for comments on the pandemic's impact on the transatlantic relationship. Um, well, the immediate effect of the COVID crisis is that it affected the economic performance of all participating countries. There are, of course, many others, but this is the most immediate to, to deal with. Uh, so the question then becomes, what can countries do to quickly come out of this? And um, the, the quick answer is regulatory reform to free up the animal spirits, allow people to do more business in the case of Romania. There is an immediate opportunity with, uh, with the three C's initiative and infrastructure uh, growth that can uh, increase employment. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ambassador Ma Meyer, what are your thoughts on the challenges of the pandemics moving ahead? Well, first of all, there are common challenges for both uh, Europe and the US, and I think we have to uh, cooperate, stay together in this, try to exchange data, try to cooperate in terms of uh, uh, medical possibilities. There is this stage when uh, hopefully a vaccine uh, will be uh, on the market and here it's again scope uh, for better interaction. I will just mention the, the fantastic sympathy uh, of the Romanian people and the Romanian government in terms of uh, uh, this pandemic uh, with the United States and also the United States attention uh, given to Romania during the uh, worst part of this crisis uh, at the, uh, in March and April. Let's uh, uh, remind people that uh, we've sent a, a team of medical uh, doctors here in the US uh, to assist uh, with American authorities and uh, the medical system uh, during the pandemic. Let's uh, remind people that the uh, U.S. has uh, provided assistance uh, even uh, during that uh, uh, very difficult uh, period. Uh, also, we had an important conversation between our two presidents during that period, uh, emphasizing uh, again the need for cooperation and solidarity and I think a uh, partnership like ours uh, is even more uh, enhanced uh, by such moments of, of crisis. And we've shown that uh, we can stay uh, alongside, alongside even during such difficult periods. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Zuckerman, would you like to pitch in? Thank you. First, I want to uh, just say uh, that I wholeheartedly agree with Dan Nagra's uh, comments to the prior question that uh, <clears throat> United States participation uh, in any of its activities in Romania has never limited participation from other uh, EU or NATO countries or any other country for that matter, other than China, perhaps. Uh, with regard to the pandemic challenges, uh, I think Ambassador Mayor George is 100% uh, right. Uh, I think it served to bring Romania and the United States even closer together. The Romanians sent uh, various doctors to the United States. The United States uh, gave a variety of aid to Romania. Romanian uh, American companies in Romania gave millions of dollars in various aid, whether cash, uh, uh, aid in kind uh, or other uh, uh, benefits uh, to Romania to help it get through this. Uh, one of the other issues that came up and nobody's mentioned today, but I think President Johannes deserves uh, a great deal of credit for, and it goes to what Dan Nagra was saying. He came home from the uh, EU meetings with 
80 billion, uh, I believe it was euros, in reconstruction help and economic benefit help from the EU. Uh, I think that's a remarkable achievement that will get uh, Romania through uh, this process. I think also, if I may just very quickly come back to what I was saying about China, let us not forget where this whole pandemic started, who exacerbated it, and who continues to be responsible for this global nightmare. It is China. It's nobody else other than China. China is doing this to us with regard to pandemic. It's trying to control and subjugate people in China and trying to export that to other countries. Secretary Keith Crack, uh, Crack excuse me, is right and insisting that we have to have clean 5G, clean pathways and other secure methods. We cannot underestimate the threat that China poses to the free world. It's a disaster. And underestimating that danger will bring no good to anybody in a free democracy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. This is Krishan. Do you have any thoughts on the matter? I think it would be great to continue the relationship, especially and the partnership and the assistance, especially as Romania is seeing an um, unprecedented surge in the number of cases. And even the fact that the healthcare system in Romania is perhaps the one that has gone the most stressed throughout the uh, post-communist era. I think it would be fantastic if um, Washington would look at this with specific attention. Yes, it's really wonderful to um, receive the EU support, and that's natural since um, Romania is contributing to the EU budget and um, should also benefit of, um, of the uh, prosperity of the EU. I know there are also efforts at the NATO level and the two countries are working together. Uh, I'm sorry, all the NATO countries are working together, but the two countries are working together within NATO too. Um, yet, I think on the U.S. component, and as both ambassador mentioned, whether it's U.S. companies present in Romania who are benefiting of the resources that um, the country is providing um, for the people-to-people -people interaction to know that the strategic partner cares and supports that sector, especially now when it's most in need, that will be well received. And if I, if I may, I'd just like to add one point with respect to vaccines. President Trump has put together a U.S. government task force with respect to distributions of vaccines around the world once they're created. Uh, the Exxon Bank is part of that task force and will be providing financing solutions to any countries that need it in order to uh, be able to acquire vaccines. Thank you very much. Thank you all for your, your thoughts and comments. It has been a marathon of interesting ideas, encouraging, um, encouraging and promising avenues of developing the strategic partnership between America and Romania. And on this note, um, thank you very much. A fantastic event. Thank you all for joining us, our panelists, our viewers, um, everybody at home and the organizers. Um, especially. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much.